read the questions real briefly, real quickly, just to get a spirit and the essence of what the questions are. You're not trying to memorize them. You're not trying to look at the answers. You're just trying to get a general idea so that when you read the passage, you kind of have a heads up. Okay? Then you're going to read the passage. And then you're going to write at the bottom here uh, what the main idea, the central idea of the passage was. You're not going to do it in a paragraph form. You're not going to do it in a sentence form. You're just going to um, write a phrase. All right? And because almost always the first question is going to be something like this here. What was the passage about? And some of these are all valid. And we get into this concept of which is the best answer and things like that. So you don't want to go there. You want to read it and just snapshot right there in your mind what you just read. Okay. So on that note, um, <clears throat> let me let me kind of say two things about when you're reading the passage. So a lot of kids, either by convention or they were taught to do this or whatever, they start underlining stuff as they read the passage. They start circling stuff as they read the passage. And that's about the extent of all you guys should do. Um, you might say, well, I know what works for me. The problem if, is if you do more, you're going to run out of time. This is a time test. It's not something you can take home and bring back the next week. Um, also, um, this is not about super deep analysis. Analysis needs to happen, but it, it kind of just has to happen at a higher level, simpler concept. Okay? So, um, so that's the kind of level you want to see this at. Yes, you need to understand what's going on. All right? So, um, and then, and I see a lot of kids, um, they put little, write little notes on the side and stuff. You do kind of want to be check marking things off and circling and underlining, but again, that's about the extent of it. Especially if you, if you read the questions beforehand and you find that you, you, you think you found an answer. Um, remembering that the answer couldn't, that may not be the answer. The answer could still be somewhere else. Okay? Um, the other thing is, if you're writing so many notes on the side, you're wasting time and you're going too deep. Okay? Um, I once tutored a kid um, maybe two years ago. Uh, I think it was for grade seven. And when we got on the ELA part, this was for the New York State test. Um, she read the passage and I asked her what it was about. And I said, what's the manner of the passage? What's the story about? And she went on for a minute. I figured, okay, that's all right. She went on for two minutes and then I said, that's all right. I figured, let me just see how far this goes. And she actually went for 10 minutes explaining what was in the passage. And this is a one page passage. It doesn't demand all that. It doesn't require that. And what she did was she basically gave me an exact summary of the passage. Detail, 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 who said what, and who did this, and all this other stuff. And yes, that is what the passage is about. But normally when they're asking for the main idea and things like that, they're asking what's the main underlining concept of what's in the passage. So I asked that same student, once she understood, oh, oh, that's what they mean when they ask that? Yeah, they're not asking for every single detail. So I said, capture it in as small as possible that you can. What's the essence of this? And she still gave me a two-minute answer. And I had to be, you know, as judicious as possible. I was like, you're still saying too much. And she was like shocked and horrified. Like, how could I say less? And I'm like, go even higher. You have to get this at the most highest level. What is the main idea of the passage? That kind of a thing. All right? And you should be able to write it out in five or six words. That's it. Okay? Um, for instance, if we just look at this, uh, when you eat an orange. So let's just assume this passage is about oranges. That's it. It's one word. I'm not saying what this is the passage is about. But if it talks about oranges and stuff, it's actually about flavors. But that's what it's about. It's about flavors. That's it. Now, there's certain details and supporting information and all this other stuff. Those are secondary. You're just trying to capture what is the total, absolute essence of this passage. And I'm spending a lot of time on this because, because this is a lot of kids are getting a question wrong. And some of these are questions being given to you on a silver platter. So if you read the passage, the first thing you're going to do is write at the bottom in a phrase what it is. And again, it becomes vague. If it's about oranges, obviously just, just writing the word oranges isn't going to capture every single detail of the passage. 
if you just write the word flavors. It's not going to tell you everything about flavors. Which part of flavors? Yada, yada. So, but at least you captured the spirit, the essence of it. This, this is so important, guys. Um, it's it's some, something you guys are just distorting. What's the top level concept and idea that keeps coming out? And that's when they're asking about main idea and central idea. If they're talking about the tone, if they're talking about the author's craft, if they're talking about what kind of literary work it was, those are all different questions. But when they're asking about the main idea or the central idea, that's the thing they're trying to get at here. Okay? Um, so why don't we jump into the questions with that in mind. So, again, you don't have time. You can underline, circle, and check things. Put a check mark or something like that. Maybe put a word, word maybe put a question mark along the side of something. But once you start writing stuff, it's way, 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 way too much. Um, and I understand that can be complicated. Uh, but try to start doing it more mentally. And this is kind of reverse because in the math section, I tell you guys to write down as much as possible. Um, but what is happening is kids are writing tomes, large, large amounts of information on the side. And it's time you, you can't spend doing that. You have about a minute and a half to do each question. And um, it, it's, it's a tough deal, right? It's a tough deal. You have a minute and a half to do each question. And if you have to read the passage on top of it, which is going to take at least a minute and a half by itself, that's kind of equal to a question. And some people really need to read the passage twice, or they need to read it slow. So we, we can't address those at this point. That's something I would have to do one-on-one -on -one with you guys, because um, I'm a private tutor and so on. There are ways to, to enhance kind of things like that as well. So just focus on the words. And there's enough time between now and the test to still... There's about 48 days or something at this point. If, if, you, if you, this might, you might be watching this video in a couple of years, in the middle of the summer, then there's more time. But even 48 days is enough time to review a whole bunch of passages and get yourself in the habit of not doing that. And I took that same girl, by the way, who did, who did that huge summary. She wrote gigantic amounts of information on the side. And I was able to, in about four weeks, get her to not do it. And I could just ask her stuff. I could ask her the questions orally even. And she would get them. So on paper, she even did better. All right. So so you were able to do this stuff, and it's just a matter of kind of breaking habits. And I understand they could be good habits. I'm not saying doing that stuff is not going to enhance uh, your comprehension of the passage and so on. But you don't have the time to do it. You won't finish the test. Okay. So that's the reality of this. Um, and and even by the way, if you have a an IEP that allows you accommodations to get more time on the test. There's still an unlimited, there's not an unlimited amount of time. At some point, you know, you can't spend three days doing the Shazat, all right? 